So tonight, we have a very special presentation. Tonight, we have with us Dr. Barry Burns. Uh, now, for those of you that don't know, Barry Burns is a businessman who owns several small companies. Uh, his business background has taught him to focus on the bottom line, so his study of the financial markets was for one purpose only, to make profits. He started his study of the markets under the direction of his father, Patrick F. Burns, who became independently wealthy through trading and had over 70 years of trading experience before passing away in 2005. Today, Barry's going to be showing us some simple tips to dramatically improve your trading discipline, remove fear and hesitation, and trade with confidence and consistency. Barry, it's all yours. All right. Very good. Thank you, Kevin. And hello, everybody. Welcome. Hey, we've got a huge group here today. Thank you very much for coming and spending this time with us. I am very excited to be here. I always enjoy working with real traders and the guys over there. Uh, you guys just put together some of the best trading education that I've ever seen in my life. You always bring the best of the best. So thanks for that. You guys provide a tremendous service to the community. So, hi, I got a lot of people saying hi to me. Hello there. <laughs> All right, well, let's jump right into it and let's start giving you some good stuff. I'm excited about this webinar today because I have some very unique things to share with you that I don't think you'll hear anywhere else. So let's jump right into it. And actually, Kevin already gave my background. There's a lot else to say there, but you know what? He did a good enough job and gave you the basics. So um, I won't spend any more time on this. Oh, other than to say, um, one of the newest things, I just got Active Trader Magazine in the mail today. And I noticed there under new books is my latest book. And you can't even get it yet but they have it listed there and um, it is coming out soon and it's called Trend Trading for Dummies. You may be familiar with the Dummies series of books and um, so Wiley and Sons Publishing Company they hired me to write a, another book in their series and it's called Trend Trading for Dummies as I said and um, lo and behold I opened up the magazine and, and there it was they've already got it there um, and a little picture of the cover and everything so like oh wow that's great. Can't buy it yet, but <laughs> it's already in the magazine. So anyway, when it does come out, it's scheduled to come out uh, late summer or early fall. Uh, pick up a copy. It's, I'm really proud of it. It's it's good. It's a big book, over 300 pages, and oh my gosh, I never realized how hard it was to write a big book like that. Um, I have new respect for authors. It's amazing. Okay, uh, let's get into some of the really, really most important stuff. I know uh, this is the legalese, and some people think, oh, great, this is just the boring stuff. Well, you know what? The legal stuff is very, very important because it comes out of bad experiences. This is very practical and stuff. This is really the anti-hype. And I'm not selling you anything today anyway, so put your pocketbooks away, put your purses away, put your wallets away, put your credit cards away. I'm not selling anything today, so you don't have to worry about that. But um, what I do want to do is give you the truth about trading, be very transparent. This is a profession, not a get-rich-quick scheme. I'm very um, guarded when it comes to this profession. As Kevin rightly said, my dad was a trader, and so I take it very seriously. And it really bugs me, it really bothers me when people start marketing things that make trading seem easier than it really is. So trading is not easy. It's not suitable for all people. It's very risky. Most people lose money trading. That's just the fact. So also some markets are leveraged, so it's possible to lose more than the amount of money deposited for a position. Make sure you talk to your broker and know what your maximum risk exposure is they can tell you, they can look at your account and they know what kind of margin and, and leverage is made available to you by them. Very important is only use funds you can afford to lose. So we call that discretionary money. Please, please, please do not trade with money that you need for your mortgage or to put food on the table or for your retirement or to send your kids to college. No, it's too risky for that. Only use um, discretionary money, money you can afford to lose. And then finally, all information in this presentation is for educational purposes only. I'm not going to be giving you any specific buy or sell advice. Uh, the information here is, of course, entirely at your own risk and for general purposes only. And we assume no responsibility or liability for errors or omissions.
All right, now, my lawyer's not here, but if he was, he would have a big smile on his face saying, Barry, you covered yourself, good job. <laughs> but again, for me, it's more than that. It's about protecting you. It's about being realistic, and it's about making sure that um, we don't get sucked in by the hypesters. Okay, so today, what we're talking about is one of the biggest problems that I have found most traders have, and that has to do with the psychological issues in trading. And I'm going to give you a couple of very practical approaches to solve your psychological challenges. And these are exercises that you can go and do. So, again, freebies here today, but this is the kind of stuff It takes a little effort, takes a little time to do these exercises, but it will pay off. And I forget who it was, but there's someone who once said, a famous quote, is successful people do what unsuccessful people are unwilling to do. Not what they want to, or not what they can't do, but what they're unwilling to do. So successful people, they go in whatever field it is, including trading, they go and they do the hard work. And if you want to be a trader, like I said, there's hard work involved. And a big part of that is when it comes to managing yourself. Um, we, can't, we, can, we can manage our uh, positions in the market, um, but we can't really control the market. The only thing we can control is ourselves. And most people have a hard enough time doing that. So I'm going to help you with that today. All right, so first of all, let's understand a little bit about the markets themselves so that we can start with the psychology of the markets overall. What moves the markets? All right, first of all, is it fundamentals? Do fundamentals matter? Well, my good old dad, he traded a lot with fundamental analysis. And yes, they definitely do matter, absolutely. The problem is that they become less and less reliable. Um, we become aware of accounts of book cooking, um, of financial information that just is presented but is wrong. Uh, market goes up on good news and down on bad news. That's what we would expect. But then other times we find that the market goes up on bad news and it goes down on good news. And that seems very, very strange. So, but it's unreliable is the point. The market isn't always logical. It doesn't always do what it's supposed to do. So what really moves the market is people. All right, people. And people who are behind their computers these days because, let's face it, a lot of trading occurs with logarithmic trading, high-frequency trading, and computerized trading. But even behind that, those programs are designed by people and what they think, what they feel of how the market should move. That goes into their programming. So markets move based on people's beliefs and feelings. Now, it moves based on the beliefs, the feelings, the thoughts of lots of people. So it's not that the markets move based on the principles of individual psychology, but the markets move based on the principles of mass psychology. And mass psychology works on different principles than individual psychology. People's behavior in groups is different than people's behavior as individuals. And this is very important because when it comes to the markets, the markets move based on the principles of mass psychology. And so this is why I use technical analysis, and I don't rely too much on fundamental analysis because, and this is kind of my own thing, I define technical analysis as the mathematics of mass psychology. That's really what it's measuring, the mathematics of mass psychology. So what's the nature of the markets? Well, the movement of the market is the movement of mass psychology. So the nature of the market is human nature. Hmm. So charts, the reason I use charts are they are maps. They are maps of collective human behavior. Now you notice I have the word behavior capitalized. There's a reason for that. The market isn't like people, it is people. Nothing gets plotted on a chart until people take action. Charts don't map people's thoughts, beliefs, hopes, and fears. They map their commitments. Now this is very, very important and this is why I like charting. So 
people when they use fundamental analysis or they trade the news, things like this, they're always looking for what they think people should be doing. And that again is based on logic. But people don't really behave logically a lot of times. And so what we want to know is, well, talk is cheap. Actions speak louder than words. And so we want to know what people's actions are, not just what their thoughts are, what they tell you, but what do they do? You know, and literally we're talking about putting their money where their mouth is. The charts, they plot, they map where people are putting their money, their commitments. Not just what they would tell you, but what they actually do. Okay, and so that's why charts matter. It's because that is plotting what people are actually doing with their money. All right, so what's the nature of people? If the nature of the market is the nature of people, then what's our nature? Well, number one, we're goal-oriented. People by nature are just goal-oriented. We grew up and, you know, we started out as little babies and one of our first goals is to learn how to crawl, to get mobile to because we're very defenseless as little babies and so we want to get mobile we want to protect ourselves we want to be able to feed ourselves we move on and then we want to um, mature and we get married and we get careers and on and on it goes and we've got kind of a linear path throughout our lives we're goal oriented markets are goal oriented too and that's called a trend now on the process of going toward our goal Anybody who's lived long enough as a human being understands that we never have straight lines from here to there. Life is messy. And on our way to those goals, we have three steps forward and two steps back. And that's even become a phrase that we all use about the process of pursuing anything. And the nature, the nature of markets is that way too. And we call those oscillations. In other words, trends don't go straight up or straight down. They kind of wiggle up and they wiggle down. And then sometimes um, in life, on the pursuit of our goals, we just get stuck. We don't just go three steps forward, two steps back. We just stop moving. We get stymied. And markets do that too. They go into periods of consolidation, indecision. They're just really not sure what to do for a little while. And that's because the people trading the markets don't know what to do. They haven't formed a clear decision yet. That's why they do it. It's people. And then human beings also have cycles of work and rest. We work five days a week, well, generally, and we rest on weekends. It used to be the old way anyway. Um, but we do work during the day. We sleep at night, unless you've got an unusual work schedule. But we still all need times where we're awake, we're productive, and then we still do need sleep. Markets are that way as well, and the reason they're that way is because people are that way, so markets go through cycles of activity and then the slumber. And then, just like human beings, the cycles that the markets go through are not evenly spaced. I've got a, a charting platform that has a cycle indicator on it that just comes with the program. And the problem with the cycle indicator, though, is you can set it to a certain number of periods, whether it be five-minute bars or daily bars or weekly bars or whatever, and it's supposed to measure those even number of cycles. Well, unfortunately, the market's not that neat and tidy. Cycles don't stay consistent. In other words, you don't have 20-day uh, cycles all the time throughout the year, and human beings aren't like that either. We're not that neat and tidy and consistent. So we go through what we call expanding and contracting cycles. Sometimes the cycles moving up are long, and sometimes they're short. And we do that, I remember, in grad school when I was working my master's and later on my doctorate. Gosh, we would be before midterms or writing a major paper or finals. We'd be up for two, three nights. We wouldn't even sleep until that test was done, and then we'd crash. And markets do that too. They get, um, well as Greenspan once called it, irrational exuberance, right? Where they'd get crazy and they'd just go way too high, go way too long. That was just irrational. And so cycles are not stable in the markets either. Don't expect them to be. And it's because people are emotional. In fact, all psychological studies that have been done 
show that people base their decisions more on emotion than they do on logic. And I've consulted with some companies, even international companies, and you know, to a T, every CEO that I've ever worked with has told me, yes, you know, I understand how most people are emotional, but I make my decisions based on logic every single time. And then I'd work with that guy for, well, usually it only took like a month or less, and already certainly after three months, six months, and it was very clear that he or she was making their decisions primarily based on um, emotion and then supported those emotional decisions with logic. And no matter how much they might put on the front and how well they might be able to defend it and even act it out, at the core, most of their decisions were based on emotion. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. In the West, we tend to think that's bad. But it's not necessarily a value judgment. It's just how we are. And therefore, uh, we love, we hate. We overreact or we become passive aggressive. We're certainly not always logical. Now, sometimes we're logical, other times we're not. But guess what? You'll see that in the markets as well. So when we ask what the markets are like, they're just like people because they are people. We are the ones trading the market. Okay, so that's the big picture of the psychology of the markets. Now, let's take that big picture and now let's bring it down to us, you and me. How do we manage our psychological issues when we're trading as individuals? So first of all, we know that, that Pareto's principle applies to mark, um, uh, trading the markets as well as it does to pretty much everything in life. We've heard it as the 80-20 rule. Roughly, approximately 20% of the people make 80% of the money. Now, some people think, oh, the markets are rigged and that's, that's horrible. No, that's just the way it is. That's natural. That's normal. You'll see that in any area of life. Small Business Administration says that exact same thing about any traditional small business. So trading is really not that unusual. It's the same thing. The good news is I, meaning any one of us who decides to enter the trading world, I think I'm going to be different than the masses. And that makes sense. If I didn't think that I was going to be different than the masses, given that the masses lose money, I wouldn't even begin trading. Okay, now here's the problem. Everybody who becomes a trader thinks they're going to be different than the masses. In other words, they think they're going to be one of the winners, one of the 20%, not one of the 80%. Now here's the irony. Guess what? Just the fact that you think you're going to be a, better than the masses means you're not going to be different than the masses at all because you're thinking just like they're thinking. Okay, that's <laughs> that seems like circular uh, thinking, but actually there's a little distinction in there. It's not circular thinking. It's what the Chinese call an iron circle of logic. And so it's similar, but here's what it is. In, in Chinese philosophy, this iron circle refers to a paradigm that you cannot get out of as long as you maintain the mental framework of the paradigm. The only way to escape that thought pattern is to transcend it, to get out of the circle. All right, and I'm actually going to show you how to do that today with a practical exercise. We're going to use that fact. The first step is just to recognize that I am thinking like the masses and stop trying to think differently. Okay? So step one, as in most things in life, is acceptance, acknowledgement. And this is something that's hard for a lot of people to do because, actually, I remember, uh, gosh, this is years and years and years ago, a newspaper uh, did an, uh, actually was a, a reporter for a newspaper, went out on the street and asked people if they considered that they were um, below average, a little below average, average, a little above average, or way be of, above average of the average human being. And the vast, 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 vast majority said they were above average. Well, of course, that's mathematically impossible. <laughs> so, um, but that's how we think. That's how we like to think of ourselves. 
So we need to bring ourselves down a notch. First of all, humble, humble ourselves and say, you know what? We're actually thinking like everybody else. We're part of this human race, and we have this tendency to think we're better. Not a lot better, though. Very few people said they were a lot better. Most said just, you know, a little bit better than the average person. Okay, we need to bring that down one more notch and just say we're part of this human race. We're like most other people. Acknowledge that. Okay, then here's the tricky part. So here's what I did. This is the practical exercise to help you transcend that iron circle. Now, this also will bring into play um, an acknowledgement as to why I started this webinar sharing with you how the mass psychology affects the way the markets move. So here's what I did. I actually did this. You're welcome to do it as well. And it's a free exercise, but it does take some time. I spent about six months doing this. I think you can get the benefit doing it just for probably as little as three, maybe even less. Depends on you and your experience. But here's what I did. I attended a lot of live free trading chat rooms. Now, it's very important the type of chat rooms you attend. You don't want to attend the ones where there is a professional trader or someone who knows what they're doing. All right, This is not to learn how to trade. You want to go into one of the freebies where there's just a bunch of people who don't know what they're really doing um, and they're just actively sharing back and forth their ideas, their thoughts. They're looking at charts and they're telling what they're doing and you know it's more of a social thing. Then what you want to do is you want to be able to hear them, whether it's typing or audible, it doesn't matter. And you watch the charts that they're watching in conjunction with their comments about those charts. Now, remember, here's the key. The masses are wrong most of the time. So what you're hearing in those chat rooms is the inner dialogue and the behavior of the losers. And I don't refer to them as losers in a derogatory manner, but just in a, liter in a literal way. They're losing money. So I did this for six months. Again, what I'm doing is I would listen to their comments, and as they're commenting on the market that they're looking to trade, I'm watching the same charts they are in conjunction with their comments. And before long, what happens is you start to pick up patterns because people become very habitual. People are habitual by nature. We are habitual by nature. And you start to pick up those patterns those habits, those patterns, those repetitions. And you'll see they'll do the same thing over and over and over and over. In other words, when the market does something, they will start thinking the same thing when the market does the same thing. And they'll do it over and over and over and over and over. And it's almost exactly the wrong thing. In fact, it's uncanny, and maybe you've even experienced this yourself, it is almost ridiculous how incredibly perfectly wrong they are. <laughs> It is bizarre how they have mastered the, with perfection, being wrong. It's like you couldn't even try to be that wrong if you tried. All right? But, and again, that's not a criticism. It's just pure observation. So, here's what happens, though. It's very important you do this for a period of time so that you start to see the repetition. And you start to see the patterns. It's almost a pattern recognition type of thing. And then what will happen is you'll get that ingrained in your brain and you'll start hearing those same comments over and over and over and over and you'll be able to do the opposite. You'll be able to then, instead of listening to their comments and looking at a chart, you'll be able to look at a chart and after a while, after months and months and months of this, you'll be able to look at a chart and say, oh, this is that chart pattern where all the losers say this because they do it all the time. So let me give you a quick example, okay, just to bring it on home make it more clear for you. So one of the patterns that I noticed that was just uh, over and over and over again, crazy, uh, the market would be trending up. And so the market would be making higher highs, higher highs, higher highs. And as it got extended, um, inevitably, there would be people saying, oh my gosh, this market is way overbought. It just can't go any higher. I'm shorting. I'm going short here. 
and usually the market would go down a little bit and it would fill their order, just enough to fill them so they'd get in, and then, you guessed it, it would turn right around, go back up, and stop them out, giving them a losing trade. And then they would say, oh, I can't believe it. I thought for sure that was the high. Okay, well, you know what, now it's made another higher high. Oh, it just, there's no way it can go higher high. And they might refer to some technical analysis, stochastic, RSI, MACD, um, average true range, you know, Bollinger Band, candlestick pattern, whatever. They'd always have something to refer to. It didn't matter. Um, because... Then they would say, all right, well, this thing is way, way, way overbought now. There's absolutely no way it can go higher. This is crazy. Never seen it this high before. Um, I'm definitely shorting now. And they would. They would take a short position. And, yes, the market would go down just enough to fill them. And, of course, yes, you guessed it, the market would then turn right against them and stop them out a second time. And usually about this time, then the language got more colorful. <laughs> <laughs> they would be saying, oh, bleepity bleep bleep bleep, I can't believe it, this is ridiculous, this is insane. All right, one more time. Well, you can imagine what happened. They shorted again, market filled them, and then took out their stop again, and then time, this time all hell breaks loose, and they're mad, they're pissed off, and they're saying this market is crazy, trading stinks, uh, you know, my broker's watching my position. I've heard that a million times. Oh, my broker's taking the other side of my trades. They probably got a $500 account and they think their broker's watching them. And, um, you know, silly. And um, then they'd say stuff like, well, I'm going to play golf. Today's just a horrible trading day. Something like that. So anyway, um, me and uh, one of my uh, mentors, actually he coined the term, he called it kamikaze trading. He said it was suicidal. And, um, but this is a very, very common pattern, and I've seen it a million times, a million and one, a million and two. If I was still in these chat rooms, I'd still be seeing it. And so now, I, actually, it's interesting, I have so much repetition with that and with some other patterns too, but that's one example, that when I'm watching this on a chart, I can, in my mind, I can almost hear it's like almost almost audible that I can hear these people saying that, and I, I know what the losers are saying. I'm hearing the dialogue of the losers in my mind. And believe me, that's very beneficial. That's almost like an indicator unto itself. And there's many different patterns like that. So um, that is a hugely valuable exercise for you. I encourage you to do that. Does, is it time consuming? Yep. Is it entertaining? Yeah, kind of is. I mean, it's sad, but boy, it can really benefit you tremendously. Because another thing you'll find is you'll you'll find that you'll actually um, perhaps. But what I found was me my sometimes agreeing with them, saying, "Yeah, he's right," but I wouldn't take trades. I would just kind of watch and observe, and then they were almost always wrong. And then I'm like, "Wow, I'm sure glad I didn't take that trade because actually that looked pretty good to me." And again. By humbling myself and acknowledging that I'm not better than any of these people, in fact, I'm just like them, it helped me to then embrace that and say, wow, I need to watch myself. And then I, I got to watch my own inner dialogue and not trust it. Because I actually wrote an article about this once, I think it was for eSignal Magazine or eSignal Online, um, I forget, I've written several articles for them and others, but whoever I wrote it for, um, the article was called good trading is unnatural and that's part of where I got this from is that good trading is very unnatural it doesn't our instincts don't lend it themselves toward being good traders and so it's really not good to trust your own inner dialogue but it's important to become aware of your inner dialogue and when you align it with other people's being part of this mass psychology as we are then you start to see that and you start to also hear your own and you start to say, wow, um, yeah, I can't trust my own instincts with trading. And therefore, we need a, an objective, proven, tested, rule-based methodology for trading to overcome our own instincts. Okay, so that's one example. Now, one of my favorite books, of course, one of just about everybody says this is their favorite book, but it is a great one. Uh, Market Wizards, actually there's a series of them now, and in his follow-up book, The New Market Wizards, Jack Schwager wrote this. 
And by the way, for those of you not familiar with this book series, I'd highly recommend you get at least the first book. What he did was he interviewed a lot of the best, most successful traders in the world. And his goal was to find out what common thread they all had. Okay? And here is kind of the summary of everything that he found. He said, when asked what was important to success, the market wizards never talked about indicators or techniques, but rather about such things as discipline, emotional control, patience, and mental attitude toward losing. The message is clear. The key to winning in the markets is internal, not external. And that's absolutely 100% true. Now, one of my big problems, frankly, I'm just being very, I'll confess my sins to y'all. You're my padres today. And one of my biggest problems was over trading. This was one of the things I struggled with tremendously. One of my mentors also had that as one of his biggest problems. And so fortunately, he was able to really help me with it. And I learned a lot from him. So overtrading is one of the biggest challenges to new traders. It's a very, very common problem. But one of the hallmarks of successful traders is they actually trade a lot less than you might think. They wait for the perfect setups because they know that's the only time that the odds are really with them. And that makes the difference between trading and gambling. So we don't want to gamble. The difference between trading and gambling is that we can actually set up a probability scenario that favors us as opposed to the house, such as a slot machine. So we want to make sure that we're only trading when the odds favor us. And that is not most of the time. That's only certain situations. So we wait for the market to come to us, so to say. And good trading takes a lot of patience. Now, even in the gambling world, however, professionals know that. Now, I'm not talking about slot machines. I'm talking about poker here. Profitable poker players fold on more hands than they play. If they don't have a strong opening hand with a high probability of winning, they simply fold and wait for a better one. Now, here's one of my uh, favorite books. And this is not even a trading book, but I recommend that you look into this. This is John Patrick's book, Money Management for Gamblers. Now, he's a poker player. And he's a very colorful character, so um, I'm going to warn you about the language here a little bit. But um, he's a very successful poker player. And there are certain things in poker that have a uh, parallel with trading, especially when it comes to risk management and money management. So here are a few quotes I strung together from his book that apply to trading. He said, people who are way better educated than me rip my theories from here to Hades and back. They claim gambling is all math and statistical analysis. They will never grasp the true meaning of gambling because they have never been there. People who think that a math equation is going to give them a leg up on winning ought to have that leg whap them in the area where they sit on their brains. Okay, I told you it got a little colorful. Now that's interesting because, again, there's a lot of people in trading who think it's all about mathematics and statistical analysis and, you know, you have to be the smartest guy in the in the world to be successful at trading. You have to graduate from MIT with the PhD in mathematics and all that kind of stuff. Hey, I worked with a floor trader in Chicago. I got an apartment out there. And I'll tell you, down on the floor at the CME, and again, no disrespect, but a lot of those guys um, did not impress me as being geniuses when it came to statistical mathematics, but they were great traders. They made a lot of money. They knew how to make money. In fact, what they did was pretty darn simple. It was ridiculously simple. But they were very disciplined, and they knew how to manage the money, manage the risk, and you know they'd been around for a long time, so they had a lot of experience. So anyway, I just wanted to comment on that. Then he goes on. He said, the pros don't make mistakes, and they don't have tells. Patience is a virtue, just what we talked about not overtrading, and not making mistakes either. Stupidity is a one-way street to disaster. Talk is minimal, and mercy is absent. I can guarantee you that's true on the trading floor. Make a mistake, and seven vultures circle the wagons waiting to divide the spoils. When the night is done, and you're fortunate enough to escape with a small profit, 
The ride home gives you only a short time to count your blessings and your money. Boy, that's just like trading. You trade all day, and you know what? You come away with some money. As long as you made some money, you had a good day, and that lasts until the next morning, and it's day by day. But the thing I want to point out here is, and it's my own editorial here, that I capitalized the word mistakes. That John talks about um, making mistakes as being one of the biggest problems in poker playing. And so that's true with trading as well. Absolutely. It's about being disciplined and not making those, those mistakes, sticking to your rules. So if you're not trading well with a successful methodology, it's most likely because you're making mistakes. In other words, I've seen people who trade the same method, just to give you an example. One of my mentors, a different guy, he, um, he was the best trader on for his brokerage. Okay, They had a trading floor in the CME. They, they didn't trade on the floor. They had an office um, in their brokerage firm and they had a trading floor there, computerized. And young guy and made millions of dollars. So they made him the head trader and had him teach everybody else. Well, they all used his methodology, but most of them still didn't make money. Why? The methodology was successful, but most people just didn't stick to it they started becoming gunslingers and winging it and thinking they saw something better. They were making mistakes. So, and this is what most of us do. We need to eliminate mistakes. No one ever becomes a perfect trader, so forget about that. But the first step in reducing your mistakes is to identify them. Now, here's the Ten Commandments. Actually, you know what? We don't have time for me to give them all to you. But I wrote out a list of Ten Commandments Whoops. Okay. Yeah. And um, if you email me, I'll send them to you. And uh, my email is barry at topdogtrading.com. And I'll just email them to you, attach them to your email, and send it back to you. So for free, no charge for that. And these are just 10 rules that all good traders follow. Okay. There's 10 of them. And if you break one of those rules, that's what counts as a mistake. So um, these are 10 rules I came up with, but a lot of them are very common that you'll read in a lot of books and so forth because most traders understand that you know mistakes are mistakes and follow the basic same principles of trading. So um, send those to me, but here's the main thing that I want to show you. Here's my trading log, and I'll send you this too if you want it for free, no problem. Now, trading logs are very important to keep. But and pretty much every trading course has one, but you don't really need one that just gives. Okay, here's when I entered and here's where I exited at this price and so forth. Hey, you can download that from your broker and you know get that. That's at the end of the day. That's no problem. Here's my trading log, and this is what's really helpful. This is the second exercise now that I promised you. And by the way, I'll, I see a lot of questions have come in. And I, sorry, I'm not getting to them, but I just want to make sure I get this webinar done by the um, hour deadline that was promised. And then if we have some extra time, I'll answer the questions, OK? So I'm not ignoring your questions, but I just want to um, honor the time commitment here. So this trading log is more than just when did you enter, when did you get out, how much did you make? So what this is about, if you notice, First of all, at the top, I remind myself in red, successful tra trading is simply a business of not making mistakes. So I've got my entry time and exit time and price targets, how much I made and lost. Okay. Now, the gray area where it says notes, by the way, there's three, I can put three trades on each sheet here. So under trade one, where it says notes, there I put um, the reason I took the trade, number one. Okay, which setup in my trading methodology I was using. Number two, what I was thinking when I took the trade. So here we go back to analyzing your internal dialogue. What was I thinking? And number three, what was I feeling during the trade? So those are the three things that go into notes. Okay, what was the setup? The reason for the trade has to be a, a setup in my trading method or in your trading method, whatever. Number two, because you want to make sure you're not just trading off the seat of your pants. Is there a legitimate reason on a tested methodology you're taking the trade? Number two, what's going on in your mind? 
In other words, if it's just, oh, this thing's way overbought, well, that's meaningless. That's your own opinion. So, but still write it down. If that's what you're thinking, you write it down. And then number three, what were you feeling? Were you feeling a little scared? Were you hesitant? Were you feeling aggressive? Were you mad because you had some losses and you're trying to make them up? Whatever you're feeling, write it down and be honest. And then what you're going to do is you're going to have um, these notes for every single trade you take and you're going to start seeing patterns. So you're going to start seeing patterns. For example, go back to our original example of, oh, this thing's way overbought. And you see that you took 10 trades that day where you thought it was overbought and you lost on 9 out of 10 of them. Well, now you're going to start seeing the picture. This is like a mirror. And you're going to say, wow, when I think it's overbought, it keeps going up. I can't trust that thought, that inner dialogue. In fact, maybe I should reverse that. When I think it's overbought, then that's actually a, a sign of strength to the upside. It's just like with Bollinger Bands. People think price hits the upper Bollinger Band, it's got to go down and bounce down to hit the lower Bollinger Band. Not at all. Generally, depending on the pattern and volume, you know, it's more to it, but generally, hitting the upper Bollinger Band is a sign of strength to the upside. Then we go to, and the same with, um, you know, the reason for your trade, make sure you're actually taking a trade that's in your method, what your thought pattern is, start to see patterns there over time, and then what your feelings are. See what happens when you're fearful over and over and over and over. Look for all the trades where you were afraid and see what the results were. Look for all the trades where you felt very confident. Oh, I'm feeling really good about this one. Write that down if that's how you feel and see how your confident trades work out for you. When you're hesitant, okay, write that down. And then over time, maybe 20, 50 trades, how many of those that you felt hesitant, how did those work out for you? And you can actually use then the kind of a biofeedback mechanism, your own feelings as an indicator. And then in the yellow section, you write down any mistakes you made. This is huge. Okay, that's where you go to that the Ten Commandment list. Or any mistakes that you might be aware of. You can go on the internet too and get a list of, you know, common trading mistakes or whatever if you want to, or you might know your own. But whatever mistakes you made, write them in there for each trade. So maybe um, you placed your stop too soon or, or too close, or maybe you uh, let your you took your or the market turned around would have stopped you out and you pulled your stop so you didn't get stopped out and the market kept going down and down and down and down and down, and so you end up losing more than you should have. Um, whatever mistake you made over trading, or um, not taking your profits when you should, or taking profits too early would be another one. That's a very common problem. People see their P&L going green and they get all excited. They're up $100 and they think, oh my God, I'm a king of the world. And But there's no uh, rule-based reason for them to get out of the trade, but they just do it because they're excited that their P&L is green for the moment. And they made $100 and they think that's a lot of money. So that's a mistake. That's a mistake. Can't do it. You've got to have a rule for taking profits, rule-based trading, objective, proven, tested, rule-based trading. And so again, what you're going to do is you're going to see this on every single trade you take. You're going to start seeing patterns as you keep track of every mistake you make. Now, what you do then is at the end of the day, this obviously is for day traders. You can adapt it if you're a swing trader. You're going to transfer all of those, all that data to a weekly trading log. So under trading psychology at the top there, you see it says trade log for the week of, and then you put in the dates Monday to Friday. And then here we've got five empty rows. So each row is for one day of the week, Monday through Friday. So uh, today's Monday. So then I would take all those daily trading logs and then I would summarize them in that first row. So I put the date, next column, how many wins did I have? That's just the total number of trades that were winners, then the total number of trades that were losers. Then the next one, how much uh, did I make in total, dollar, how much did I lose dollar amount? Then the next column, average dollar win, average dollar loss. Okay, so then you divide the amount of money you made and the amount of money you lost by the number of trades, obviously. 
So your average winning trade is how much money, your average losing trade is how much money. This is where you get to see what your risk reward ratio is, okay? People always talk about, oh, well, I'm not going to take a uh, trade unless it has a risk reward ratio of 3 to 1. Hey, that's beautiful, but that's all theory. That's all theory. This is going to show you what your personal actual dollar amount risk reward ratio is in your own real trading. Okay, so now you're going to have your own actual win loss ratio and you're going to have your own actual risk reward ratio. And of course, you do this day after day, week after week, month after month, and you're going to wait a couple of weeks, maybe after the end of a month, you average all these together and you'll see you'll have a significant number then. One day doesn't make too much difference. But if you're day trading every day at the end of a month, then you're going to have a significant number. Average that out. And you're going to look and you're going to say, okay, what's my win-loss ratio and what's my risk-reward ratio? And then you're going to look to make adjustments. Whether that's good or bad, you're going to make adjustments. Now the next column is commission. This is something a lot of people forget about because commission rates are pretty darn low compared to what they used to be when I started trading. But believe me, they really still add up. And once you put it here and you start looking at this, then you move to the next column, the net P&L. That's going to be your um, total wins or total losses, and then you subtract commission from it, and that's going to be your net P&L. Most likely, that number is going to be very different. It's going to bring down your winnings pretty dramatically or even make you lose more money than you thought you did. But it's important to realize the impact of commissions. And part of that will be to help you discourage or help discourage you from over trading. And then the next one is uh, uh, your percent of account. In other words, how much of your, um, the money in your account did you either make? What percentage of your account did you make? Or did you lose that day? You should have money management rules based on how much you allow, what percentage of your account you allow to be drawn down every day. Then the next column, the number of mistakes. How many mistakes did you make that day? One? Oh, that's fine. You know, if you make one or two mistakes and you trade, you know, maybe 10 trades a day, let's say, and you only made one or two mistakes, that's not too bad. Like I said, you're never going to be perfect. On the other hand, if you made five mistakes out of 10 trades, pretty bad. Going to be a problem. Going to have a hard time making money. Just keep track of the number of mistakes, and of course, you're always working to get that as close to zero as possible. Then, this is the magic column. Actually, let's go to the last column first, mistakes. That's where you're going to actually write out the mistakes you made. So, again, if you um, cut your winners short, you, you took profits too soon, you're going to write that there. And let's say you did it five times today. Well, then you just you don't write it out five times. You just put the number five next to, I took profits too soon. And then you put the number five next to it and whatever it is. Um, removed my stop and let the market move against me. did that three times today, and then you put the number three next to it. Okay, now, the column right before that, the net P&L without mistakes. This is the magic column. This is the one that can change your behavior. Because what you're going to do in that column is you're going to go back through your trading log, and you're going to see, now, how much would I have actually made or lost today if I made zero mistakes. In other words, you're going to just take all those trades where you made a mistake and remove them and only account for the trades where you didn't make any mistakes and see what your profits would have been then. Inevitably, it's going to be higher. In fact, what I found with a lot of students is that they find that they're already profitable traders already profitable traders. That is very exciting. When someone sees this and they say, oh my God, if I just eliminated my mistakes, I made money every day this week. Well, I would have made money if I didn't make these stupid mistakes. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh my gosh, they can see the vision. I am this close. I'm a sliver away. In fact, literally, I'm already profitable. I don't have to get any other indicators or any other take any you know five thousand dollar courses. Or I don't have to do anything except I got to take away. I don't have to add to. 
all I have to do is stop making these stupid mistakes. <laughs> and that is a very, very exciting experience to have. Now again, just like the other exercise, this one takes some time, right? But remember, successful people do what unsuccessful people are unwilling to do. Can you do this? Yeah, you can do it. Anyone can do it. Are you willing to do it? Well, it's not going to make any difference to me whether you do or not, but it will make a difference to you. So I encourage you to take the time, and I'll be happy to, like I say, send you these. Um, I'll send you copies of these if you want, and um, start using them because I think you'll really, really find that this alone can turn your trading right around, and it is very exciting. So, um, last slide here. There's my email address, Barry at topdogtrading.com. If you want those documents, just um, send an email and one of my assistants will get them over to you. Just ask for the Ten Commandments of Trading and also the trading logs. And they've already been instructed to send those to you if you ask for them. Also, I'm offering today a free five-day video correspondence course. So this gives you five days of video instruction. You get a new video every day. They're about 15 minutes long. At the end of each video, there's an interactive quiz where you can answer some questions and find out how well you learned that video. And on day four, I'm going to give you one of my favorite trade setups. It's called the rubber band trade. And this is a good one. I'm not giving it to you because it's an old has-been worn-out trade. Now I'm giving it to you because it's one of the best trades. And in fact, every time it sets up, I still take it to this day because its win-loss ratio is astronomical. I'm going to give you that trade on day four. Um, oh, by the way, tomorrow, if you're interested, I'm doing another webinar where I'm actually giving away my timing indicator. This is a cycle indicator that is amazingly accurate to help you pinpoint the exact best places to buy. In other words, buy the lowest cycle low in an uptrend before the market continues up, or short the highest cycle high in a downtrend so you don't get stopped out. And normally I sell this, but everybody attending the webinar tomorrow will get that for free. No strings attached. I'll give it to you for free. In fact, I'm even going to show you how to use it. So you'll be able to take the indicator and start using it the very next day. Um, you can get all of that by going to, and there you see the website, http colon forward slash forward slash realtraderswebinar.com forward slash top dog. Everything's done through that link. Just go sign up through that link and you'll get an email with, um, with everything coming to you. Now, we've got about five minutes for preguntas. So, uh, I'm glad I have a little time here because we've got tons of questions. Oh, my goodness. And I'm not going to get to all of them. So, let me just pre-frame this by saying anybody who has any questions that I don't answer right now in the next five minutes, which will be most people, uh, feel free to send me an email at barriatopdogtrading.com with your questions, and I will be very, very happy to answer them. Actually, that's one of my favorite things to do is at the end of each day to get on my email and answer trading questions. Okay, so let's see what we got here. All right, wow, we got a lot. Um, yeah, I believe it is being recorded, as I recall a lot of people asking if it's being recorded. Um, let's see here. Okay. Oh, where are the free chat rooms, somebody asks. Um, you know, Google it. I haven't done that for a long time, so I don't, you know, I don't really, don't really want to recommend any in particular because I'm, I don't even know. There's probably a lot of new ones out there. I would just Google something like free trading chat rooms or something like that and, um, yeah, start looking around for them. So, yeah, thank you very much. Getting a lot of nice um, comments here. Okay, yeah, you want me to put the email in the chat. Okay, I'll do that. It's Barry at topdogtreating.com. There you go. All righty. Yep, I got a lot of people asking for that email address, so there it is. Um, yeah, 
Ten Commandments, right? Send me the, just send me a quick email asking for it and you'll get that. Oh, okay. Got someone who already got the five day free training and said it was great. Thank you. Um, the slide, no, the slides are not going to be available later on, but they are recording the webinar. So you'll be able to, gosh, you've got a million people asking if it's going to be recorded. Yes, it's being recorded and therefore you'll be able to review it. Um, oh, the webinar tomorrow, the time for that tomorrow is 5.30 Pacific, 8.30 Eastern PM. <laughs> yes, Dennis, I know Portuguese. Okay, you're welcome, you're welcome. Um, I don't recommend any brokers. I've got people asking for all kinds of recommendations and things. Um, because, well, there's just a bunch of different reasons, but um, yeah. Well, thank you, Steve. I appreciate that. Richard, you just, uh, to get the free five-day training, you just go to, in fact, I'll type that. Oh, actually, they already did. They typed the uh, website into the chat room already. Realtraderswebinar.com forward slash top dog. And in the chat box, that actually should be a clickable link. So, oh, you know, I just realized. When I typed my email address, it didn't go out to everybody. Barry at topdogtrading.com. Okay, but there's a clickable link in the chat box for getting the five-day correspondence course. Um, and in that, you'll get an email, and that email will also give you um, a link for registering for the webinar tomorrow if you're interested. All right. Yep. Okay. Here, that's how you do it. Uh, you're welcome. Okay. Just a lot of people asking how to register for the webinar. So, okay. You're welcome. You're welcome. A lot of people just saying thank you. Okay. Very good. So I think that's about all that I can answer right now since our time is up. It is straight up at 6 o'clock here in beautiful Los Angeles, California. So golly, we got a lot of people. Huge crowd. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you guys and women being here today. Thank you for your very kind words. Wow, a lot of really nice compliments here today. I'm a little humbled by that. Thank you. And yes, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me tell you, if you go through these exercises, and again, obviously, I have no vested interest whether you do or not, but I found them to be extremely helpful. They dramatically changed my trading. So um, if you do, I, I think you'll find them very beneficial as well. And yeah, go to uh, realtraderswebinar.com forward slash top dog, and um, you'll get my five-day free video courses, the five-day uh, videos my favorite trade setup, the rubber band trade, and you get the link for the webinar tomorrow. So thanks to you guys over at Real Traders, and I appreciate it, Kevin and Mark and everybody else over there. It's always great to work with you guys. Thanks for hosting the event today.